y'all don't blame me this is not my fault so this morning i was scrolling on twitter y'all know how it goes i know a lot of y'all do the same thing but i saw ian Rappaport. he reported this he said raiders wide receiver Devontae adams wants to play for the jet sources say and i saw that i was like okay that ain't no surprise because that's what was talked about yesterday that his interest was playing for the jets or playing for the saints because the jets they got aaron Rodgers. he got a lot of love for aaron Rodgers, and the saints they got Derek Carr. he got a lot of love for Derek Carr. so i'm like cool but let me keep reading this tweet he also said but the all pro is open to landing with other teams and he hasn't demanded to be traded anywhere specific las vegas will take the best deal so that let me know like exactly what it says he's open to be traded to somewhere else if he cannot land with the jets and aaron Rodgers, and even if he can't land with Derek carr and the saints so i decided i said you know what let me go ahead and click on that article. Let me just see what it has to say. Just for the fun of it. Nah, whatever. It is what it is. What's the worst that could happen? And it got worse. So, it says, if Devontae Adams gets his wish, he'll eventually be a member of the New York Jets, playing with his friend and four-time NFL MVP, Aaron Rodgers. Lamar Jackson halfway there. He just got to get the Super Bowl, too. But anyway, he said, New York is where the Raiders star wants to play after informing the team on Monday he prefers to be traded, multiple sources say. But Adams has not demanded as much from Las Vegas, and this is not a scenario like Rodgers in 2023 when the quarterback informed the Packers he would only play for the Jets. So again, letting us know, like, Devontae Adams wants out, but where he wants to be in Hey, it's really wherever. Not necessarily wherever, but it's wherever. So, continuing, it says, In fact, according to sources informed of Adam's thinking, he is open to, pl open to playing for several other teams. And this list includes the New Orleans Saints, of course, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, nobody wants to hear about that. Uh, the Buffalo Bills, that's a, a good one, too. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys, ooh, that would be something over there. Uh, perhaps the San Francisco 49ers, uh, but, uh, excuse me, I skipped one. The Baltimore Ravens are on that list. And when I saw Baltimore, I said, oh, Baltimore, Baltimore. Well, let me continue reading them. It says the New Orleans Saints, Pittsburgh Steelers, Baltimore Ravens, Buffalo Bills, Dallas Cowboys, and perhaps the San Francisco 49ers are among teams that either have inquired about the six-time Pro Bowler or are places Adams would be happy landing. So it could be one or the other. It could be both. Like, to me, like, with, with Eric DaCosta, with Eric DaCosta, we know enough times if a player becomes available, even if he don't even got the craziest intentions on landing that player, he is going to check to see, see what the team is talking about with that player. Now, um, I would assume, I'm just assuming that Eric DaCosta may have checked with the Raiders on what the price for Devontae and just just to see because a lot of times GMs they like to do that just to see what the market is what teams are talking about and stuff like that so on and so forth but um there's something either way there's some interest whether it's from, like, like the article said like Ian Rappaport said it's either interest from Devontae Adams and playing for the Ravens or they could be interested in the Ravens acquiring Devontae Adams. And with the video that we did yesterday, uh, and shout out to Sarah Ellison for bringing up what Devontae Adams said back in January uh, about playing, not playing for a stats, but playing for the chance to help a team get the Super Bowl. He said that he, he got all the stats already. He got plenty of stats already. Now, if he had the chance to maybe break a record, then he would think about that. But he said that it really ain't about that. It's about winning. He said, hey, if, if, you compared a, a season, if he could get like 1,500 yards somewhere versus getting eight, 900 yards, but being able to compete for a Super Bowl, he said he would take the eight, 900 yards. And he said that he would like to play with a Lamar Jack. He said all that stuff in that video, in that interview. So, like, you got to think, like, the interest level would be there. Obviously, it wouldn't be only to the Baltimore Ravens, but he done already said it. So we know from his side, like, if he was to be traded to the Ravens, he would be straight. He would be fine. I, I feel like if – I feel like the only holdup that there would be if Devontae Adams were getting traded to the Ravens, it would be the money. That would be it. It would be how they would work out a contract, how they would restructure it. That would be the only holdup, period. He knows how the Ravens been doing. He knows where they've been coming up short. 
He knows all that stuff. He sees all that. We see all that stuff on an annual basis. Can Devontae Adams help with that? Can, can he be somebody that could help push the Ravens over the top? Yeah, of course. For sure. Like with the Baltimore Ravens, they get to the playoffs. And they completely throw their identity out the window. They say, oh, we're a running team. We got this super strong running team that helped us get here. We, Oh, man, we so powerful in the run game. Let's go, baby. You know what? Let's go play some prove-it ball. Let's go throw like crazy. And then they end up coming up short. They don't even give themselves a fighting chance a lot of the times. And even last year. Last year, they, went, they, they threw their game plan. They threw their identity way out the window. And they still only lost by seven points. They, they, and there was some, oh, some close plays that just changed the game and changed the way things are going. There was a Zay Flowers fumble. There was the Lamar interception to Isaiah Likely. Oh, it was a lot of stuff. But anyway, Devontae Adams, he could help the Baltimore Ravens tremendously. But y'all, y'all already know that. But it's nice to see that from whoever side it's coming from, whether it's coming from the Ravens to Devontae or Devontae to the Ravens, it's nice to know that there is some mutual interest there. Super duper Kyle 2.0. That is Kyle Vinoy, who this man hurt his eye in week one. He talked about them Chiefs doctors, said it's a funny business going on, but he ain't looked back since. Uh, well, it's kind of a little, little joke in it. But anyway, Kyle Vinoy has been just on a tear recently. He went in that Chiefs game, they knocked his eye out, and then for the next three games, he said, oh, you know what? I'm getting two sacks each, one sack per game for each eye, and Kyle Vinoy has been killing it, and he, in his first first time in his 11-year career, player of the week, defensive player of the week, uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, my fault, AFC defensive player of the month, my fault, I'm over here discrediting Kyle Vinoy's stats and his account, my fault, Kyle, I, I apologize, that's on me. So, with his AFC Defensive Player of the Month, he got six sacks, seven tackles for loss, nine QB hits, and even got the one forced fumble. And that was the other day against Josh Allen when the Buffalo Bills, they wanted to run that trick play. But I just, I, I love it for Kyle Vinoy. I love it. What, what's crazy, I remember um, last year, like he showed us last year, like, hey, I could play. They didn't sign Kyle Vinoy until after week three. And this dude still got, still had a nine or nine and a half sacks last year. They signed him after week three. So he showed us like, and I, I thought like, that's cool. That, that's amazing. But I thought maybe, oh, okay, that, that, that's nice. But could that be a one-off? Could that be like a fluke almost? Could it be? I don't know. But then I was thinking like when they re-signed Kyle Vinoy, I'm thinking like, all right, this is good. Because now you, you saw what he did when he came to the team brand new. In the middle of the season, off the couch, and he balled. So imagine what he could do with an entire offseason full of work. With an all, entire offseason with his players getting having that camaraderie with the coaching staff, understanding the playbook even more. And and th- actually, this is a brand new defensive coordinator. So that's a whole new change. But Calvin Noy said, look. I'm straight. I got it. I I know what to do. I done been here, been there. I done been around the league. I got this. So shout out to Kyle Vinoy for this amazing, great, phenomenal accomplishment. Some roster news. Of course, a couple of days ago, Arthur Millette, he made his debut back on, on the practice field. But also Rasheen Ali. He is also back. Let's read this report from Jameson Hensley. It says, Ravens running back Rasheen Ali will practice on Thursday, which opens his 21-day practice window to return from injured reserve. The rookie fifth-round pick made the 53-man roster but was placed on IR with a neck injury in week one. So Rasheen Ali is back. Now, uh, with that being said, does that kind of give us a little bit of the status with Keaton Mitchell? I don't think so. Not necessarily. It just lets us know Rasheen Ali is healthy enough to be back. Uh, now, Keaton Mitchell, he'll be back eventually. We just, we waiting. We waiting. So we just got to be extra patient with it. Like I said in yesterday's video, though, I, I, I this is just me. Uh, again, I don't know nothing from nothing. And I, I, in two weeks, I might end up being completely wrong. But I think... After this Bengals game, within the next two weeks after that, then I think that Keaton Mitchell is going to be back. Oh, that's just me. So 
If I'm wrong, okay, cool. But if I'm right, I'm celebrating. Now, when you look around the league, it's always a lot of familiar faces on different teams. But you go to the Miami Dolphins in particular. Uh, Tua went down with an injury a couple of weeks ago, and hopefully he'll be straight for the long term. But the Miami Dolphins say, you know what? That guy Tyler Huntley, we, 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 we like him, and we're going to try him as our backup quarterback. And they did just that. But he went from being backup Within two weeks to end up starting on Monday Night Football. And I really thought that I'm like, oh, Tyler Huntley with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Oh, my goodness. And Raheem Mostert. I think Devin Chain was out. But either, with all that speed that he got at wire, oh, my goodness. Oh, Tyler Huntley about to do his thing on Monday Night Football against the Titans. They ain't won a game. Let's go. But it was rough. It, it, it was really rough to watch that. And it's like. A lot of the same things that you saw with Tyler. It, it, it was weird, though, because you actually got to give credit to Ravens coaching staff because Ravens coaching staff, they when he was with the Ravens, they made Tyler Huntley look a lot better than what we saw with him in the Miami Dolphins. Now, there were some of the same thing. You see a lot of the same tendencies with Tyler Huntley. They were getting the ball out quick. They were not letting him hold the ball for too long. Um, and also with the deep ball, it, it was a bit of an issue because he – he put just too much air on it. It was like hanging up in the air for like 20 minutes. But anyway, Tyler Huntley, um, he's getting another opportunity with the Dolphins as a starter this week. I don't even remember who they play, but looking forward to seeing him have a bounce back game, hopefully. But Tyler Huntley is not the only former Baltimore Raven on the Miami Dolphins. And not even Zach Siler, not even Calais Cam. We ain't even talking about them. But this came out today. It says, uh, with standout pass rusher Jalen Phillips lost for the season due to a knee injury. And that sucks for Jalen Phillips. Because that man can play. He's a baller. He's a nice pass rusher for the Miami Dolphins. He went to University of Miami, too. Uh, but that's two years in a row that he's losing them due to injury. So, you know, Dolphins, they're going to be looking at him sideways. Because it's a business. It's, it's a tough business. They're going to be looking at him sideways now like, oh, we can't pay you. You The last two seasons, you ended on injury reserve with knee injuries. Because I think last year, I believe it was ACL. And now this year, it's knee. So, that's, that's no good. Especially as a pass rusher. Like, as any player but yeah it's tough man but anyway um with standout pass rusher Jalen Phillips lost for the season due to a knee injury the Miami Dolphins are signing linebacker Tyus Bowser uh, off of Seattle Seahawks practice squad and on to their active roster per sources so shout out to Tyus Bowser who went from the Baltimore Ravens and had that there was that weird breakup I Still don't know. I don't know if any of y'all know what happened with Tyus Bowser. It was the craziest thing. And it was like the most secretive thing ever. Like nobody talked about it. Um, but Tyus Bowser goes from the Baltimore Ravens uh, to the Seattle Seahawks practice squad. And now he's on the Miami Dolphins active roster. So we hope that Tyus Bowser, when he does get his name called, that he picks up the phone and answers, Hello! I got you, Miami. But big shout out to Tyus Bowser for getting this shot. Thank you, Clean. We have my favorite part of these videos where we feature your questions. Let's get straight into it. First question came from my guy, Harry. Now, Harry, look, man. It was early in the morning when you sent this question. So, now that you've been sending questions for years and you've been sending them to the right email for years, but you sent it to the wrong email, my friend. What's up with that, man? Because I know you out of all, but I know you know. But I'm going to give you a pass because it's you. And I, it's probably early in the morning. You probably ain't had your coffee or your tea or whatever you drink early in the morning. You probably ain't have it yet. So I'm going to give you a pass. Anyway, he said, what's good, team? Keep it clean, family. How are you doing? I, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I hope you're doing even better. He said, um, I hope everyone's doing well. And prayers for those affected by the hurricane or just anybody going through it right now. I appreciate that. We appreciate that because it's always something. People always going through something, unfortunately. Um, but I, I appreciate that. He said, my question for today is, are we looking at the wrong thing? Ooh, let's see. He said, everyone is up on the Devontae Adams hype train, and though he is extremely talented for what it will cost, I don't think it's worth it. He'll probably go for a third and a fifth. Then we will have to rework his deal. I don't mind a third and a fifth. My problem would be reworking his deal. I just don't think we should pay 30-something million for a 30-plus-year-old receiver when he won't come close to getting 1,500 yards in our type of offense. So, while people are looking at Devontae Adams, I think the Ravens should be looking at these receivers to add to the roster. All right, first, before we get into that, I can understand that argument. Um, why the, you, you said the draft picks, sending those is fine, 
But it's the payment part. It's the payment, the age, that combination of it. And I get that. Honestly, it's me. Like, y'all may think I'm crazy, but I honestly wouldn't even mind sending that third and the fifth. And that's actually, that's funny. I had put that on Twitter like a couple days ago that I thought that that's exactly what he was going to go for. But I wouldn't mind sending that even if he was a rental just for this year. I honestly would not mind. And then next offseason, Try to sign T. Higgins. I try to sign T. If they could sign T. Higgins to like a two year deal, like a one, I know he ain't gonna go for no one year deal. But and I know T. Higgins, he probably he wouldn't even want no two year deal. But if they could t- sign T. Higgins next year uh, to like a, a two year, because he he got them hamstring T. T. Higgins like he nice, he is nice, but he got like minor injury problems, minor ones. So I would like if they went after him. But anyway, continuing, um, he said we want a big body receiver with good hands. How about we ask Derek? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I just saw. I just saw. How about we ask Derek Henry? And I thought you was about to ask uh, if he turned to a receiver. But anyway, he said, "How about we ask Derek Henry about his old running mate Corey Davis? He's six three, two fifteen, good hands, uh, just like we did with Yannick Ngakwe. Uh, I would be willing to bring him in on a vet minimum to see what he could do. He's only twenty nine. Another receiver that I would try to get would be Romeo Dobbs from the Packers. He's only 24, good hand, 6'2", 205. I thought, that, I thought they really liked Romeo Dobbs over in, uh, in Green Bay. So I wouldn't see them letting him go. But Corey Davis, uh, out of the league for a year. Um, yeah, he's is, – is he a free agent? Did anybody? I don't think anybody got him. Uh, they could. My, my thing is – I get what you're saying because it would be way cheaper, way cheaper. But my thing is like – do this for Lamar. Like, just the the quality in my it, it should be better. The quality should be better, and it, it ain't necessarily got to be a Devonte Adams, but um, just just doing doing better for LJ man, because the Ravens have not provided him like that would be a very Raven move to go after Corey Davis. Uh, low risk potential upside, and if it fails, and they could be like, oh okay, well we tried. But I, I would just rather them swing big than just – and I, I feel like that's more of a bunt. And I'm, I'm and sorry to any Orioles fans out there. I, I don't watch baseball, but I've been, been seeing all over Twitter the Orioles. They, they, they got crushed in the playoffs, so that's unfortunate. But, um, yeah, I just feel like that would be more like a bunt instead of a big swing, trying to get a grand slam or something like that. Uh, he said, this is who I would like to see. Why would the Packers do it? Because he isn't being used in that offense much anymore. Oh, okay. He said, Jaden Reed has become the number one receiver in Green Bay. And Christian, oh, yeah, Christian Watson's another name that they love over there, too. Uh, and Christian Watson, when healthy, is the number two. Uh, Dontavian Wicks jumped over him and is their number three. Oh, so he way down on the depth chart. He said, I think we'll be able to get him with the fourth, which is where the Packers drafted him. He's insurance for the Packers. He will be a nice asset for the Ravens. Oof. Uh, yeah, I know. I know he was doing this thing recently, but I guess not this year. Recently, he got jumped over by everybody like that. He said, "Not the last receiver that I know we can get and should definitely trade for is Jalen Hyatt, currently of the Giants. He's a deep threat with hands, and I would love to get him with us before he ends up with the Cheats. I mean, the Chiefs. The reason he's available is because he's a deep threat, and Daniel Jones can throw the ball over twenty yards, so his skill set doesn't match his QB, and therefore he is not being played. Now he's a little smaller than Bateman at six foot." It's 195, but he has elite speed, and we know Lamar can launch a football. He probably will cost the fifth round, especially how dysfunctional the Giants front office is. I doubt they will have jobs after this season. EDC should take advantage. Now, with that part, um, if he's a deep threat, uh, six foot or six foot 195, um, and you know Lamar can obviously launch the ball. What about Tez Walker? Now, I don't know what Tez Walker, like, obviously Ravens, they ain't feeling him that much because he's been on inactive every week. They don't see a place for him. I just feel like if they were to get somebody like that, what type of impact would he have? Because the reason I, I would say, like, to get somebody like that, like, that's already established like that, is because their impact is going to be felt, and the Ravens are going to use that player, boom, like that. He's going to be inserted in the offense, boom, like that. Like for uh, Devontae Adams, for example. And I know you, you said it's not worth because of the money. But somebody like him, for example. Clear, cut, number one, established, veteran. If he got traded to the Ravens, he's on the field. If Jalen High is traded to the Ravens, you don't know when he's going to get on the field. Not saying that he won't, but you don't know when his time will be. And just to, and I'm just using these names as examples. Like, DeAndre Hopkins, somebody like that. If Ravens trade event, he's on the field. 
like from jump. He's on the field. Um, Ty, just an example. I know it's not happening, but a Tyreek Hill, he's on the field from jump. He's there. He like he's being inserted into the offense ASAP. But for Jalen Hyatt, I don't think he would be like that. Uh, for Romeo Dobbs, I don't. Th I don't think he would be like that. Especially depending on if, if, if and if Ravens don't trade any receivers that way or any of their like Rashad Bateman, for example, if they didn't trade Rashad Bateman away to get a receiver, which I don't think they will or need to or should, then a lot of these receivers, like even a Corey Davis, a Corey Davis, he could possibly see the field. Um, they can sign him as a free agent. They will probably sign him to the practice squad, if anything, let him ramp up a bit. And then there will be Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, uh, Nelson Aguilar. Corey Davis, he may be a, he, he he's gonna he's gonna leapfrog Deontay Hardy, and then he could possibly leapfrog Tylen Wallace, but from there, what's Corey Davis gonna do? See, the the type of receiver that I would be looking for would be somebody that would impact the team right away from jump. Ain't no question. Like even and again, this is just an example. I know it's not gonna happen, but somebody like an AJ Brown, Ravens trade for AJ, boom, he's on the field from jump. But I I just don't feel like these guys would. Like, especially the way that the Ravens do things, they would not make immediate impacts from jump. But anyway, he said, um, EDC should take advantage. I just think while everyone else is looking at Devontae Adams and where he will end up, the Ravens should be looking at these three receivers that won't cost that much uh, and be just, and they would be just as helpful to the Ravens' offensive style as he would be. Let me know your thoughts and like, <laughs> he said, let me know your thoughts and like, John Harbaugh should have been five years ago. I'm out. Next questions came from my guy, TJ. He said, please, Engraven, tell our Ravens to get Devontae Adams. God bless the family, the channel, and our Ravens. Get Devontae Adams by any means necessary. Oh, he ready for DA to be here. He also said, we have the run game on lock. Why not get Devontae Adams and have the pass game on lock as well? Just a thought. He said, and Martha, Martin, Luther King, excuse me, Martin Luther King had a dream. Get Devontae Adams. Uh, and he said, uh, the, do you remember the commercial from a couple years back? You remember that commercial where Lamar supposedly fumbled the ball, went through heck and high water, and at the end of the commercial it says, Lamar Jackson gathered the fumble, throws a pass to who? Devontae Adams. Ravens, please go get Devontae Adams. Oh, that was that commercial where they were like, um, they were like clay figures. They were animated, and they were like running through walls and stuff. I, I, know, I forgot what the brand is, what that commercial was for. But, yeah, Lamar Jackson, he did complete the pass to Devontae Adams. So, hey, could it be? Could that have been telling what was going to go down in the future? We'll see. Should we do it? Next question came from my guy, Michael. He said, what's going on, brother? Hope all is well with you and the fam. Appreciate it, Mike. Said, I woke up this morning to see that the Dolphins are looking to trade wide receiver Tyreek Hill. I think this will be a perfect fit for the Ravens. It brings more speed to the wide receiver room, and it will also open up the run game because you have to account for Tyreek Hill. What are your thoughts? No, 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 no. No, that, I, I think you got it uh, mistaken because, yeah, um, Tyreek Hill, who is a troll, by the way, but Tyreek Hill said, woke up to trade news, exciting. He did tweet that. He, he did tweet that for sure. But it wasn't necessarily that they looking to trade him. Uh, I think Tyreek Hill was just tweeting that about something else. Now, if if he, if he Tyreek Hill was a – boy, it's like y'all already know that who I feel is the best receiver in the league, and I do think it's Tyreek Hill for sure. Um, Justin Jefferson is, is like that. He is like that for sure. Just watching what he's been doing since he's been back from injury. I know he's been back all year. He's just been like unstoppable. Tyreek Hill, he's like that. But he, he's still my number one. It's like Justin Jefferson right up there with him, obviously. But anyway, um, Mike Evans is really good, too. I, I forget to talk about Mike. But anyway, we're getting sidetracked. If Tyreek Hill on the Ravens would be amazing. I th oh, my goodness. That would be like a glitch, a cheat code. Oh, my goodness. He would. Oh, it would be great. Oh, but no. Tyreek Hill, he, he ain't going nowhere. So we ain't even got to worry about it. Lamar Jackson's goals to win. Next question came from my guy, Aaron. He said, hey, man, after the Ravens whooped the Bills, uh, Bills Mafia talked about LJ and Josh Allen. Yeah, things unchanged a lot from Bills Mafia. Shout out to them, though, because I, I got a lot of people that I'm cool with from Bills Mafia. They, they, they super nice, man. But anyway, he said, anyway, these are the goals for Lamar Jackson. 125 to 165 passing yards, 55 to 60 yards rushing, four touchdowns, two on the end, two on the ground. Ravens win 32 to 27. That's my predictions. What are yours? 
Okay, so this is about them Bengals uh, coming up against Cincinnati. And Cincinnati, by the way. Now, I know everybody been looking at that defense and be like, oh, that defense is garbage. Their pass defense is garbage. Their run defense is even worse. Da -da -da -da. Ravens should run through them and run over them and run past them and whatnot. I do think it's going to be a close game, though. I mean, I thought the Bills game was going to be close and the Ravens blew it out. So, Ravens, if you want to, like, make me wrong, please go ahead. I, I don't have no problem. But with it being a division game, um, I just don't see it being a blowout. I wouldn't be mad at it being a blowout, but I just I, I don't see it being a blowout. I mean, I hope we do, though. But, yeah, so because division games, like, these teams, they know you. They get to see you at least twice a year. I will say, though, the one advantage that I think the Baltimore Ravens have uh, over the Bengals is that um, Ravens got a new defensive coordinator in Zach Orr. And... So Bengals haven't seen him yet. They obviously have seen the tape on him with the Chiefs and the Raiders and the Bills and the Cowboys, but they haven't played him up close yet. Uh, so this will be their first time experiencing that. So um, I think that that should help a lot. And just as long as he deploys that pass rush, man, that pass rush, because the pass rush has been amazing. Uh, if they just continue to do what they've been doing, um, they should have Joe Burrow uncomfortable all game. Because you can't let Jamar Chase get loose. You can't let T. Higgins. You can't let um, Yoshi. You can't let none of them boys get loose. Mike Jasicki. You can't let them boys get loose, man. So pass rush is super, super important. I think Ravens can obviously get it. Uh, but I think it's going to be a close, 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 close game. Uh, he said, by the way, we must trade Devontae Adams for a second and third pick uh, with the Raiders. Beat the best. Be the best. Don't fix anything if it ain't broke. Just be us. Go Ravens. Big trust your boy Aaron. Shout out to you, 